Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's edition of the Gamut Network. There is nothing I love more than having incredibly powerful, pioneering, amazing women on this show who are truly making a difference in the world of adaptive and the world in general. And that certainly is our guest today. Deborah, welcome to the show. It's so wonderful to have you on. And I'm so excited to finally see you face to face. In Thank you. It's exciting to be here. Open. So, Deborah, like we always do in our show, I, I always love to start from the beginning, and that's just a little um, personal history on you, uh, your story, um, how that eventually we're going to get to, how that evolved to where you are today. So, please. Of course. Well, it actually started my my brother was born with what they called and at that point in the game, right, a learning disability. And so what I saw, it was very inspirational from my father who, you know, kind of um, worked with the state and local government to get buses and really changed the, the fabric of our city. And the, you know, I remember him being at kind of city hall and meetings and he was a I, for those of you who know me, I'm a very petite person, as is my father, and he also didn't have a very loud voice, but what he said really resonated with people, and this idea that everyone was, you know, everyone deserved to be able to get to school in a, you know, in a way that was easy for them, and he, you know, it, his whole thing was about equality and you know, this idea of, you know, kind of people with disabilities that there was just this, this leveling. And I, I, he, he spoke from the heart and passionately and he was able to, to really move mountains and, you know, he made things happen. And I, I really looked up to that. And if we fast forward to, you know, my own experience with my, my own child, where we weren't aware before my son was born uh, but he was born with Pierre Ben sequence. For those of you who know what it is, it's a very rare birth defect uh, where the, the jaw is very small. Uh, there it are, um, you know, it's very difficult to breathe. It's very difficult to eat. Uh, there are often, you know, kind of other, uh, it, sometimes uh, in the past was called, uh, it's called a sequence, right? There are things that kind of lead up to it. It was in the past called a syndrome, but there are often other uh you know, let's just say uh, challenges that go along with it. And, you know, Ezra was a, a fighter and he, um, I think through sheer will, um, was, uh, you know, didn't have to have, um, he had many surgeries. Um, he was able to, you know, kind of keep himself out of some of the really more complicated ones, but we spent, you know, much time as, you know, many families do who have, uh, facial differences and, you know, kind of other um, challenges early on and, and throughout life, uh, much time in the NIC unit, much time in the hospital. And we were, we were very blessed. Um, we were at the, um, and we found the NYU Craniofacial Center. We found at that time, which was called the uh, National Foundation for Facial Reconstruction. They've been renamed My Face. And there was a mom, actually, she was on the board and her son was born with the exact same, um, you know, kind of challenge it as her wow. face. And she went with me to all my doctor's appointments and helped me wade through everything. And, you know, I had somebody to go to with all my questions and the, the doctors were there and, you know, it was kind of this, you know, it was going to be okay. And I ended up meeting one of my best friends, Ezra had, uh, once again, he was told really not to talk until he was about 14 months old uh, when he had his um, first of two cleft palate repairs. And, you know, I met a speech um, pathologist who really helped us. And it, it's amazing. I mean, it's like it was yesterday. And, um, and, and one of the bright spots was he, he ended up with very extensive physical therapy because he couldn't uh, sleep as, as most babies do on his back because he basically uh, couldn't breathe <laughs> if he did. Uh, he slept on his stomach. And because of that, right, he was doing like baby push-ups, right? His, you know, for, for all, at least the 14, first 14 months of his life. So he, he developed a lot of upper body strength. Fantastic. And 
And then he required a lot of additional physical therapy. And Ezra is now an elite gymnast and he inspires others. He's a incredibly empathetic, as you can imagine. And, and one other story I have to share, if any of it, I'll, I'll keep it uh, concise. My face has a holiday party every year. And we met, I think it was two years ago, uh, Ezra won a few items in the raffle and there's a little girl who didn't. And so he, he gave her just instinctively, uh, you know, one of his gifts. And um, Dina, who, who is uh, one of the facilitators, one of the leaders of my face, she came over and she said, oh, Ezra, you know, she also has, you know, Piero Ben sequence. And it, it was just like, he just like time stopped for him because he'd never met anybody else. And it was this unbelievable, right? Like talking to the parents and everything. And, and he really had a bond with this little girl who, right, had gone through so much of what he had. And I still remember it, you know, kind of like it was yesterday. And, and I think that, you know, he talked to her and, you know, he gave her advice and it was really emotional to see, right? Because so many other things, right? He was like, you know, no matter what anyone says, right? Like dig deep and, you know, like know that you can get through this. And I think, you know, I mean, so many things that I think I didn't even realize that he had gone through, right? You know, things people had said and, you know, and he really moved through it. And I think, you know, there's so much that we can learn from all of these children and, and adults as well, Mindy. I mean, you, you've seen so much of this and, you know, you've inspired so many people. Oh, well, right back at you. But I, I want to dig in a little bit to a couple of points that I think is so interesting about your story. First of all, that you were also a sister of a, a brother that had a disability. And that in and of itself is something that probably started your journey, unbeknownst at that point, of of empathy and understanding and having instilled in you from your father that everybody deserves to have the same things as, as everybody else. So I find that so interesting. And then of course you have this amazing gift of Ezra come into your life. There seems to be nobody more suited for something like that to happen than you. And I, I remember when all, my son Oliver was born, we had no history of anybody really with any type of disability, let alone muscular dystrophy. And I remember even at that stage, people would say, oh, you know, God gives you what you can handle. You were meant for this. And I, I in the beginning, truth be told, I was, um, I would in my head say, you know what? No, thank you. I, I, I don't know why I was chosen. I, I, this is not how I thought my life was going to be or my sons. And now I can look at it and I say, oh my God, thank you. Thank you that I was, chosen to have these this amazing, eye-opening, incredible experiences that get to lead me to people like you. And I, I, it seems like, you know, Ezra is not only doing that for you and your family, but for others and just that beautiful story that you shared. And, and thank you also because you led us to Dina, who has also been on the show. And I love the perspective that, you know, there is to, you know, facial differences and you know different from Oliver who if you looked at him and he was sitting down you wouldn't necessarily know something was wrong until he started to move or interact and you saw him physically but with with facial differences there is an immediate response and I, I, I just want to kind of dive into that a little bit as as a mom and, and also then kind of turning it to how you, like your father, guided your son. How do you move through that? When, you know, I know when Oliver had a feeding tube on his face, the stares, the snickering the, that we would experience. So I'm curious how you manage through that piece. I mean, I think in some ways you were so lucky, right? Being in New York, right? I mean, you've kind of seen it all, right? Yeah. So I, I, I have to say, I think, you know, and, and actually, I, I also have a nephew who uh, is, um, you know, has got a hand deformity. And, you know, I know my brother has said he's faced some really, uh, some very challenging comments, right? Like on the playground. And, you know, I think it's, he, you know, he, he's had some very, uh, you know, it, it's really been very hard for, for him and his wife. And I think that, 
you know, with us, I think we just, we're like, you know, this is just kind of how it is. And, and we're, you know, we're going to get through this together. And, and I think with, you know, with our kind of how we approach it is, you know, this is just kind of is what it is. And this is kind of our, our daily life. And I, I just think, I think there's also something about, right, like the vibe in New York City where it's, you know, this is just, this is our child and this is how he's getting through it. And, you know, and we need your support, right? We need your, right, we need New York City's support to help us, you know, kind of get through today. And and I have to say too, it was, it's been very interesting. I mean, any, you know, and it's easy to give advice, right? But I remember seeing sometimes, so Ezra ended up with all of his teeth capped and, you know, and children would ask him, right? Like, why do you have all those caps? You know, I mean, he had other things going on as well, but that's what kids would ask. And he would just tell them, right? He wouldn't like back away from it. And he would really explain it all to them. And he went to the point, right? When the movie Wonder came out, he took his entire grade to see the movie. I and I think they started to really understand. And he also brought Dina into his school. And I have to say, I was so impressed with these kids because they could have, you know, backed away from it, but they were truly curious. And so I, I, I've been really, you know, all throughout, I've been very impressed and I, I have admired these children and it says something about their parents as well, which is almost like run towards it, right? Ask the questions, right? Don't back down, right? I mean, and, and it's interesting. I also have to share something. So Mindy, I was born, you can't see, but I have like a, a scar here. Hmm. Like it was like a birth scar. And so, right, like my whole life, people be like, where'd you get that scar? What's the scars from? And, and, and so, right, this idea, right, there's something that makes you, it's unique, right? It's like uniquely you. Yes. And, and when you can then like talk about it, right, like what it is that, that you know, kind of um, makes you you. I, and I think if you own it and, and it's not like, I'm not different, I'm special maybe. I'm, I'm it's something that, doesn't, you know, it, it makes me who I am. And, and I actually think it makes you stronger, right? I mean, I think it's- I couldn't agree more of that. Absolutely. It, it really, like, I mean, I see with Ezra, I mean, it literally makes him stronger. I mean, he's physically stronger, but I also think in some ways he is emotionally stronger and he's helped other kids, right? I mean, you know, where they've been in gymnastics and something's happened, he's like, it's okay, right? You know, literally like get back up and get back on there. And so I, I feel that we are, yes, we are given what we, what we can handle. But I do think that going back, I mean, having people like yourself who I can talk to about who's been through, you know, some of this and hey, there are great days and there are, you know, Absolutely. less great days. But I, I do think that, you know, there is this idea too, there's something about, right, like New York, that it's, it's a little bit more raw and, and we can talk to others and we know that we can reach out and, and ask for help if we need it. You can't, you can't, back away and even going back to like Ezra's speech therapist. I mean, I was like, I need your help. I need to know, I, you know, are there other parents, right? What would you suggest, right? Don't be afraid, don't back down from it. I love what you just said. And I think that's such an important message to lean in. And this is something that many of our guests have spoken about that they just wish somebody would just ask the question rather than stare. And, and I think from the perspective of, of, of understanding that and learning from that, I mean, look, it's generally run by fear or that, that people are afraid they're going to insult you or, but the reality is just ask the question, then we can all move on yeah. and, and, and understand what, what happened. I mean, I, I teach all over the same that if, if somebody is looking at him odd about how he's walking or anything, or even flat out ask them, just answer the question. Then we then we can all go on our merry way rather than have the curiosity there. But what I what I particularly am, am drawn to with your story is how that has evolved so deeply in the work that you are are doing now. And and I would love for you to share that because it's you you've really turned it into tr the the fact that people with disabilities are consumers. Um, it's, it's a revenue stream for companies to take advantage of, but tell us a little bit more about how that happened. Yeah. So let me start. It was probably about three years ago and we, I mean, you just never know. I mean, we certainly saw some of the, the weakness in retail and right. I'm like, wow, there's this whole consumer market. I mean, we had seen it and the, you know, and this idea that, this consumer, I don't think they were understood. It goes back to, right, people were afraid. They didn't know how to ask the questions. It's right. not that they were afraid. They just didn't know how to approach it. 
And so we, of course, I decided to have a conference, right? And we called it inclusive design, right? Because there's still, right, you know, do you call it adaptive, right? What do you call it? And the, and so we, this is a great story. We, um, we expected to have, right, we, we had 500 people register. You, the, the number, usually you have about 50% of people show, show up. So we, right, we, we had about food and drink and seats for about 250. Well, all 500 showed up, Mindy. Oh, wow. We, we, we ran out of food and drink. We opened the bar at early. I mean, it was, ah. and, and what was unbelievable is we had, a, um, a, a full lineup of, we had people with disabilities talk about, right, how they find clothing. We had designers and it was a full day, right, 12 to six. And we really started to, and, and what was fascinating is we had retailers, we had designers, we had technology companies, because I think it started, and we wrote a report, right, on this, um, right, the size of the market, the growth in the market, where was the market, right? This idea was there were entry price points or opening price points, you know, kind of higher end price points. And, you know, really started to kind of drive this idea that, right, there were all these customers and depending on the numbers, this is a very large, not only US, but global market. And so from US perspective, let's call it, you know, kind of 40, 50 billion and globally, right? We're talking a hundred billion dollar market. This is very significant. And it can go to anything as simple as Zappos offering, right? Different size shoes, right? Which and singles. It, They're offering yep. singles now. Yep. And it's and it's this idea, right? And it's it sounds simple, but it's 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 never simple, right? right. But and then there's right, and now what we're seeing, right, is right, you've got Kohl's who's right, and many, many of these companies who and Target who are offering, right, like adaptive lines of clothing and trying to figure out also too, I mean what, how do they market it? How do they sell it? How do they do it in store? How do they do it online? And, and what is it that this consumer wants? And then it also, Mindy, it's so, I have to share a story literally yesterday. Yes, um, I love it. So I was thinking, impressive. yeah, so I was thinking about this, right? So I have a very like small face and I can't get masks to fit. And so I reached out to, and, and let alone people with facial differences who, right, I spent a lot of time with, I, I was thinking, well, what do they do? So I reached out to Gerber Technology and right, they have in New York City, right? They have cutting machines and they can cut masks. And I said, right, would you be willing to think about right cutting masks, right? Custom masks for people. And they're like, let's right, you know, this sounds like a great idea. And I reached out to Dana at my face. And so right, these ideas, right? All you need are a few people that kind of jump in. Exactly. And, and this idea of right, just elevating what some of the challenges are. I, I think that, and, and having people come together, I mean, Minnie, this is why it's so amazing what you do. And we've seen some of these other platforms, but I think it's just, right, I mean, depending on the numbers and, and going back to, we earlier in 2020, we had started a charity called Retailers United. And we'd gotten very involved in uh, something called Empowered Cities, right? Which was, you know, kind of the mayor's offices from several of the large cities, right? New York, Chicago, Boston, San Francisco, Los Angeles, et cetera and trying to get PPE to you know, people with disabilities. And what we found is, right, once you asked, right, we asked some of the, right, like a Absolutely. Microsoft, right? Can you help us deliver, right, some of this product? And, and it was just like, how can I help? What can I do? And what we found is the numbers, right? People who self-identify is much higher, I think, than anyone would think. So this market potential is also much higher, right? Much Especially, higher. and so I, I just think that there are so many opportunities for all of us to help. And, and what we think of as helping is also probably much different than, than the needs that are there. And I do think that right now, right, the, the retail environment is, is very challenged. This market is one that is, you know, kind of alive and well, and it's not it's just- getting bigger. I mean, that's a fact. It's absolutely getting bigger, and especially as people are aging, right? I mean, yeah. it's very hard to, to close buttons. It's, you know, and this idea, right? I mean, there's, I mean, hey, right? I mean, as we age, right, our, and, and, and the world is aging, mm -hmm. right? That's the thing. And so, I mean, even just right from a, you know, from a vision perspective, from a, you know, kind of dexterity perspective, I mean, there, there are so many, you know, kind of opportunities. And so I, I think that, you know, having a platform 
to talk about these things and to come together. And I just think having right the data, I mean, CoreSight has pulled together much of this data just so that we can talk about it, right? So we have numbers. And that I think is, is truly the starting point. But I think for you, Mindy, so much of what you do is you, you bring us all together and you celebrate kind of our differences. And that I think is something that, that we all, we all want to do. Well, I, I'm, thank you. That, that's a beautiful compliment, but it is exactly what we, we need to do. Because if we're siloed and everybody is kind of doing their great work, but if we're not doing it together, then we're really not going to make change happen. But that's what I what I was so excited to speak to you and, and meet you because CoreSight being one of you know the leaders in research um, in many different industries, but to have a company like CoreSight come out with reports saying how important it is from a business perspective which is generally not how people think about people with disabilities. Every, everything is generally pigeonholed into the nonprofit sector. And unfortunately, that is how Runway of Dreams had to start because nobody would even answer my, my, my phone call until I became a nonprofit, which is a whole nother subject. But regardless, but that's why I love so much and how important it is for a company like Corsite to say, hey world, this is not only the right thing to do, but it's a huge business opportunity. So, and here's all the facts and the data and, and all of the information needed to make this happen. What would you say, and I, and I think I'm gonna answer this question as well. Um, do you feel that there are some silver linings for this population um, based on the outcome of what's gonna happen post pandemic? It's a great question. I think that what we've seen is many people have come together mm. to better understand this population, not only from a business perspective, but how can they help, right? The empowered cities, I think, is just kind of one aspect of that. Mindy, also this, you know, really understanding, right, the, the dollars and cents behind it as well. Right? Like, like you said, it's just the business aspect. And, and right, we, of course, I have been asked, you know, what this is interesting, what is it that, that is needed? And I, I've said, right, start, right, just start very practically. It's not about, right, you know, kind of, you're not going to solve it all at once, but, you know, is it, you know, kind of one aspect of apparel or footwear or, you know, kind of, and, and I think that this, this kind of business aspect and, right, this population is growing, their voice, I think, is getting louder online and offline. And that, I think, is also, and, and right, what we've seen, because so much more has moved online, right, this idea of, right, kind of celebrating, I've seen so many more events around discussing the market for people with disabilities. That, to me, is what's been incredibly interesting during the, I would say, the last few months and that those voices, I think, are only going to grow, especially as we move into 21. I, I couldn't agree more. And that is exactly what I was going to say. But also, I think the platform of virtual yes. not, is, opens up a whole new world to people with disabilities from an employment perspective, from a visibility perspective. And as you said, the voices are getting louder. I mean, the show that we just did in September for our annual Fashion Week show that obviously we couldn't do in person, but the silver lining from that show was our footprint was multiple times bigger than it's ever been because we were we could make this go global just from doing it virtually. And we could have models in our show from all over the world. We could have product in our show from all over the world. And it was so unifying. It was such a, a beautiful aha moment that, you know, that we didn't even necessarily think about. We really thought about like, how are we gonna make this work if we can't do our, our runway show in person? But it ultimately wound up being a wonderful thing that happened to our, our company, but also to the message and the mission of inclusion of people with disabilities. So I, I do really think that there's so much um, to learn from, from our, our new world. But if people have um, more questions or want to learn more about CoreSight, where, what's the best way to connect? 
Thank you. I appreciate that. So we have a website, coresite.com. So that's a very easy approach. My email is Debra, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, Wineswig, W-E-I-N-S-W-I-G, at coresite.com. And those are great ways to find out more. And similar to what Deborah just said, it's just the getting started. That's truly the hardest part that people need to just, just jump off the cliff and let's do it. And you are so supported by engaging with Coursite. It is a wealth of information and facts about how successful, including people with disabilities are. So this is something that we absolutely need to do together and just get started. It is, it is the absolute first step and then the magic will happen. But before we go, I'd like to ask all of my guests one final question. And that is about the power of manifestation, a vision board, what you would like to see in the future as it relates to your goals, your visions. So this is mine. I keep it here by my desk all the time, as you can see, I have very small goals of being with Oprah and Ellen on her couch and all these other pieces that I really want to become mainstream in our mission and have people with disabilities, just people first. If we got to peek onto your vision board, what would we see? So it's really interesting. We this year, in light of you know needing to pull holiday earlier for, for many reasons, we started a festival called 1010. So it was October 10th. It was the you know kind of long weekend and started on a Friday the 9th and ended on the 12th. And we had 100 retailers participate, 12 charities. As you know, I'm a very charitably minded person and it's all driven by Coursite. And we had 12 startups who, even before the event started, who uh, donated to the charities. And we had, you know, charities such as MyFace uh, joined us. We had the American Heart Association, Be Breast Cancer Research Foundation, St. Jude, and, you know, many others. What I would like to see is to do a 10 to 10 festival just for companies that support people with disabilities and to have, you know, those retailers and brands as those retailers and brands who are the participants and then to have those charities be the ones who are, you know, like a my face who are supporting those and, you know, many you as well. Um, and so I, I think that is kind of what I've been focusing on and thinking about but this idea that we can have festivals and we can celebrate and it's all about positivity. I'm a very positive person. And I think, yes, of course there, there are, we all have tough days, especially more now, but if we can take those challenges and then we can turn them into positive events, working together, reaching out to those in our network, how they can support us. And so that's, that's what I want to do. And, you know, I'm picking a date that's meaningful, but you know, what, what 1010 also allowed me to do was to reach out to so many people I hadn't talked to in a while. I hadn't, you know, kind of worked with in a while. And so I, I would like to do that for, you know, kind of this industry. And it's something I've been thinking about quite a bit. I've actually, you know, kind of cut out some articles. They're all, you know. Exactly. You have to understand, I have chills right now because if I zoomed in on this board, you'll see I have something called Adapticon. No way. I swear to God, I swear to God. And I just got to chill. I know. I'm not gonna send you my, the, the, what I, you know, uh, my proposal on it. So guess what? We're doing it. I love it. I We're love it. We're in. I'm so I'm excited. so excited. I can't believe, I cannot believe it. You saw it here live. I am I, I, seeing <laughs> the Gavit Network. We're just making it happen. Amazing. Deborah. I cannot thank you enough for being on the show. Bravo to all the work that you are doing, are going to do, and let's make change happen together. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. If you would like to be on the Gamut Network, please email us at talent at gamutmanagement.com. Please also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Gamut Network, as well as follow us on social media at Gamut Management. Thank you again.